with um, a lean approach to improve productivity in a coke oven refurbishment project, a case study. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone few are curious about what's the coke oven. Yeah. And so, for so hold sure. on, sorry. You know the rules. You have 15 minutes. Yeah, sure. I'm going to give you a two minute, five minute, five minute warning, two minute warning. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you pay attention. I need okay. To. So. Uh, I will for sure explain you what is the coke oven. Don't worry about it. But, okay. Okay. Um, first, continue. Wait. It'll be back in 30 seconds. It'll be back in 30 seconds. Ah, okay. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the IGLC community, the IT Madras, and also the ILCE here in India for this event. It's very nice to be here. Uh, this paper was a case study that was conducted by me as an external con consultant, and also from Bruno and Thiago, that are internal consultants uh, in Hip Kafer, that's a Germany company subsidiary in Brazil. And the last month I started as a PhD candidate at Federal University in, in Porto Alegre, Brazil as well. So uh, the title of the, the case study is Alina Approach to Improve Productivity in a Coke Oven Refurbishment. And I start bringing you the main result we've got with this paper that was the global margin increase in 46%. And that's make the, our client pretty happy during that time. The project took place in 2007, 17, last year. And the presentation is a structure in four parts like the general contest, project goals, methodology, results, and discussion. In the general contest, I will bring what is the Coke oven. So that's the uh, sketch of the Coke oven. It's an oven that provides the carbon part of the steel production. And it was a refurbishment project in between the uh, steel mill in Brazil. Uh, the characteristic of the coke oven is that despite of this carbon part, they provides uh, energy for the steel mill. So we can't stop producing coke since we need to buy energy for somewhere else to produce the steel. So we are working with hot repair in that mill. <clears throat> the contract scope foresees the repair of 253 chambers and the scope was divided into six steps. And when we started that approach, the first step presented a huge delay and problems with the budget. Uh, here you may see how is the coke oven from outside. You may see that open window and the thing is burning inside as we used to be fire workers as well, firemen there. And also the coke oven have the, the scope of the project it consists in removing the metro structure from outside, uh, demolish the existing walls and rebuild the new walls inside that the, what we call refractory assemble. So it's how the work looks like from outside perspective. And also we need to define some job conditions that are very specific in this construction case that we have a high temperature, the adjacent chamber reach 800 degrees, and the chamber you used to work reach until 40 degrees, and we have some harmful gases presence. Due to these critical conditions, the, works, the workers need to work under a regime of relay in labor shifts, and in the best hypothesis, it occurs every 30 minutes. So we start the point that you have twice the man force that is necessary for the job and how they look how is inside. So it's a very difficult conditions for construction for assembly of those walls. The project goals was to increase the operational efficiency of the coke oven refurbishment project. And first of all, we needed to catch the delay for the first phase to structure the contract planning process as the client identified that the planning team wasn't performing as they desired. So we came out to uh, work with medium and uh, long-term planning, to implement a system for managing the routines and production control into the, introducing the last planner system, and also to bring improvement initiatives to increase that improvement, that, that productivity. The methodology used was based in the basic uh, review and the literature of lean construction, lean production, and some specific tools like tag time and multi-moment analysis that was to identify the value-adding activities level. 
And the scope was divided into two main phases of workshops and sustainability it took around eight months, the whole project. And the first phase where the external consultants was more present took the analysis, the planning, and also the Kaizen that was about the production improvement approach. For the phase one, the analysis, the main goals were to get to know the people and the project and how was the first phase of the, the, the first step that had that huge delay and define the baseline. So Hipkafer has an internal tool that they call OPA, uh, it's overall process analysis that is a value stream mapping. So it's a different name because they have a standardized inside, but the, the phases and what we look for, it look there is to map the current stage. And also a, uh, a strong game by presence and looking for uh, inefficiencies and waste during production. And now I will bring you some evidence of how was the overall process analysis, the value stream. So we identified all the sequence of value adding activities. I also identified the time that they took in each of those activities considering the production crew knowledge. It wasn't measured in the on site, it was asked for the formants and uh, the brick layer the brick. Uh, labors and also we could identify bottlenecks and the main of them were about material supply, lack of preparation standards, excess of frontline workers and lack of agility in labor shift and I will bring you some pictures of the inefficiency that you could see on site like you can see on the pictures here the sex of, of frontline workers a lot of problems with material supplies in frontline uh, bricks were just transport individually, like, like you may see three bricks here, uh, again and again. And I also need to call the warehouse to bring the specific brick that was missing in the, fr in the front line. And also the mortar that was in a very small portion, it will must repeat a lot, many times during the shift. And as you may see, those guys on the windows, they are waiting for materials and they are inside the oven to be assembled. So. Uh, and that is a non-value adding activity. So you may see that we have a huge problem with material supply. That's one of the bottlenecks you had identified and you have seen Gemba. And that is another tool that you use to identify how is the movement of the people and the, shi the, the labor uh, shift during the time they are supposed to be working. The phase two considered in the planning, so we, it was divided in, two, in three aspects, the process review, the strategy, and the production management. Uh, for the process review, we made a workshop with the, the planning team to identify the business process model and to define a new responsibility metrics and uh, weekly agenda for each of one of those guys. So we could map 48 activities that they were supposed to do and we mapped six new activities that were considering production control that should be introduced on their agenda to reach a better control process. The production strategy was mapped for the next steps. So as I said before, we had six steps. We made one and now we are planning the next five. So for each step, we started like mapping the sequence, remapping the sequence of activities, identify the start and dates and the duration of each one, the histogram predicted, and also the constraints considering material, equipment, construction method, and design. So we using that, we could uh, replan the the, the histogram and we had a reduction of sex around 7% of the histogram just review the how people were divided during the activities. And the production manager, one of the managers of the construction side told us that one of the main inefficiencies of the planning was the delay to have the right information the necessary time. So we used some uh, the, we, we were based on the last planner system and we introduced daily meetings that were held twice a day uh, 7 a.m. at 5 p.m. It was conduced by the planning uh, supervisor, but also foremans, engineers, and the safety and quality responsible participate because of the great criteria that you have with safety there. And also we introduce uh, the, um, 
the quality inspection needs to happen in every brick layer. We introduced some simple KPIs, uh, KPIs uh, like PPC and also a managerial cockpit that was updated weekly. And the third phase that we call the Kaizen, that was the production improvements uh, approach, uh, our company used to use a seven phase workshop. Here I will focus on three phases of that. That was reviewing the value stream mapping, considering a future stage right now, and looking for improvements that must be implemented, and, uh, and then bring new standards for the production. So our workshop team was a multidisciplinary team, considering the general manager, bricklayers, the engineers, uh, myself, and the two internal consultants. So here he was making a pre-assembler prototype to identify how the bricks configurate in between. You may see that they are all different. Uh, in this process analysis, we, can, we could make an action plan. Then we identify two, 22 improvement opportunities and it turned into 18 actions that were, were put in the action plan. Uh, and those improvements were main uh, defined into the demolishing of the existing wall, the supply and support activities, and the production strategy. And now I will bring you some examples like before and after, how it was simple and how it brings some improvements. So first of all, the demolishing, we use like the garbage duct that make like a continuous flow of demolition. So we reduce the handling steps in between that demolition phase. Uh, also for the supply activities, that was one of the largest bottlenecks. We adapt the brick pallets uh, to the platform, the aerial platform. Then it could transport the bricks in vertical and horizontal and vertically. We didn't reach any mechanism that could put the, the pallet inside of the oven because of the size of the window we had. Uh, maybe in the next wave of Kaizen. Also, for supply, reorganize the layout and introduce in the warehouse a pre-assemble for the pallets. So the pallets reach the middle level in the sequence, the brick sequence that it must be assembled inside of the oven. It must, it's just simple like that, but it wasn't done before and it brings us the good results we've got. And also some support activities, like we had a lot of problems on phase one considering quality and cleaning. We lost 16 days uh, in our uh, predictive master plan considering cleaning. And then we review how the protective device were and introduce the practice to control them in every uh, quality checklist. And also another jig device to guarantee the, the measure of the, the, the assemble. Considering the assembly strategy, we introduce a pre-assemble guys that come in front and another crew come behind putting the mortar in the chamber. So considering the guys that must be in the climate room in that 30 minutes and the other guys that are working inside of the chamber in the other 30 minutes, we reduce the from 40 to 30, 29. Uh, labors uh, in the, this specific step. So the results you arrive. First, we achieve all the, the goals that we proposed in the beginning. Uh, during the planning, our accuracy level between production and planning reach good levels monthly, a crescent uh, behavior. And it is most of about the daily meetings that we could understand the constraints and look forward to remove it before. Uh, I, we didn't make like a look ahead planning, like the medium term, because as we talked before, it was very difficult to introduce in the company. But as the routine meetings, we could understand the behavior of the constraints we had in this period. Considering the productivity, that was our most important results, like in the step one, we have that problem with the budget, and in the other steps, we have like a reduction of man hour for assemble ton that he used. And, and in the total country, we reduced in 20%. That was a 
that was the main result that brought us this 46 percent in the margin and it was very interesting result for the company and then I bring you the discussion and first of all uh, yeah, as yesterday was mentioned the change management process is every time a challenge for us that are working with Lean and working with Lean construction and I can say that here the motivation and the aspect that, as you said, Barack said yesterday, they had fun working with Lean in this project. So that's the great part of the result is make with the group working together. For sure, the, some meetings were very upset, uh, very boring, and the pe people were pushed, but uh, the motivation was clear after the first and the second month. Another, just very quick, I need to stop. Uh, it was this strategy and the, it was used for the company as a standard for new commercial approaches and also new budgeting periods and also uh, brings the output that the company that Hipkafer told us about the external pre of a consultant that make the catalyze it, make it faster, the lean implementation during the projects. So thank you very much. I need to thank you also Hipkafer that allowed us to bring the results and I let here my contact for any questions or suggestions. Thank you.